All you have to do is close your eyes and listen. For a better experience, please use headphones. Every morning, I bathe my intellect in this stupendous and cosmogonal knowledge from the East. In comparison, all our modern world and literature is puny and trivial. Why is it important to preserve and nurture this dimension of life. The fundamental reason why it seems to be so significantly different is because it is not a product of human intellect. It is not deductions that we made out of our intellect. This dimension comes from a profound inner experience. where there is no right and wrong, there is no up and down, just seeing things the way they are. And when we say dharma, we are not talking about a religion as modern translators went about interpreting dharma as Hindu dharma or whatever, another religion. Because they came from a mindset that everybody has to belo belong to some segment of humanity. They come from a mindset where humanity has to be divided one way or the other because they come from the surface intelligence of human nature which we call as intellect. Unfortunately, the modern societies, modern education systems have entirely dedicated themselves to the human intellect, completely ignoring other dimensions of intelligence which definitely exist within us. When you go by the intellect, the nature of the intellect is always to dissect and divide because intellect is essentially discriminatory in nature. And intellect functions always with a certain identity. If you have no identity, you cannot use your intellect. So with individual identities, either of race, religion, nationality, caste, creed, gender, when you apply your intellect, it will split the world into many pieces. So the significance of what we are referring to as the spirit of Eastern wisdom is, it does not come from human intellect. It comes from a deeper dimension of intelligence within us. When I say a deeper dimension of intelligence, a simplistic way of looking at it would be, whatever you had for lunch today, if you had a piece of bread, over the afternoon, this bread is being transformed into a human being. You definitely cannot do that with your intellect. There's an intelligence here which is capable of making a banana into a human being. You definitely cannot do that with your intellect. A dimension of intelligence which is beyond thought process. Thought or the product of intellect is essentially always functioning from a limited amount of data that we have gathered. Now, what we call as Eastern wisdom is not coming from a limited amount of data that we have gathered either from the books or our life experience, but simply by enhancing our ability to perceive life in ways that the five sense organs cannot function. Why I'm talking about the five sense organs is all the data that you have ever gathered which rests in so many aspects within you, which is the food for the intellect, comes from the five sense organs. In the very nature of things, sense organs cannot perceive 
the entirety of anything. If you can see this part of my hand, you cannot see this part of my hand. This is the nature of sense perception. Even if you take a grain of sand, if you see one part of it, you cannot see the other face of it. Sense organs can only perceive in comparison. If there is no comparison, your senses are useless. Because there is darkness, you know what is light. Otherwise, you just would not know what is light. If light was on all the time and there was no darkness, you would not know what is light. Because there is silence, you know what is sound. If there was no silence, you would not have the idea of what is sound. So always in comparison, it is like, let's say you're six feet tall. Now, you walk like a tall man, you think like a tall man, you feel like a tall man, you are a tall man. You went to another society where everybody is eight feet tall. Suddenly you walk like a short man, think like a short man, feel like a short man and you are a short man. So what you perceive in comparison is a distortion of reality. It is not reality as it is. So whatever we perceive in comparison is useful for our survival process. But if we want to know, know the nature of this existence, sense organs are not sufficient instruments. What is light for you is darkness for many other creatures. You ever got into an argument with an owl? <laughs> if you did, which is light, which is darkness, where would it go? It would be endless argument. Who is right, you or the owl? The fact of the matter is, you are perceiving it as it is necessary for your survival. The owl is perceiving it as it is necessary for his survival. If survival is all you're seeking, your five sense organs and intellect are sufficient instruments. But if you want to know the nature of the existence, if you want to know the fundamental laws or dharma which governs life, the way it happens within us and around us, then you need an inner perception or another dimension of intelligence within you. Otherwise, you will only cut the world into pieces. In the name of religions, we have cut the world into… humanity into many pieces because intellectually we have arrived at our own conclusions or deductions which invariably is bound to divide because intellect is essentially a knife which cuts. It can only dissect. By dissection, you can know certain things. But if you really want to know someone that you love, you don't dissect them, you embrace them. By dissection, you may know the kidney, liver, heart stuff, but you will not know that being in any sense. You will lose it completely. So dissection is the way of the intellect because it is a sharp instrument. It has to cut, it, cut open everything that's given to it. But the East found another way. Out of profoundness of experience, you can know life. By turning inward, you can know life. When I say turning inward, you must understand that essentially the five sense organs are always outward. You can see what's around you, but you cannot roll your eyeballs inward and scan yourself. You can hear this, but so much activity in this body, you cannot hear this. If an ant crawls upon this hand, you can feel it. So much blood flowing, you cannot feel it. Because in the very nature of things, sense organs are outward bound. The moment you dedicate yourself to your intellect, you also get enslaved to the limitations of your five senses. It is in this context, the wisdom of the East is of tremendous significance to the world because it has transcended this slavery to sense perception and learned to perceive life in a completely different way. What is this completely different way? In English language, if you say mind, it is just one word, it is supposed to say everything. 
In the yogic culture, there are sixteen parts to the mind, sixteen dimensions of human mind. Now if I go into sixteen, it will take too much time, so let me compress it into four. The four aspects of the mind are called buddhi, ahankara, manas and chitta. Buddhi means the intellect. Today, modern world is largely run by the intellect. So with this, we can do many things on the outside. We can go on enhancing the comforts and conveniences of life. We've done very well in terms of comforts and conveniences never before. Never ever before another generation of humanity ever knew the kind of comforts and conveniences that we have today, but at the same time, we are whining like never before. Because as the comforts and convenience increase on the outside, as there is less to complain about what is happening around you, the emptiness of within echoes within you in a horrible way. When you're fighting for survival, when every day you are struggling to fix small things on the outside, you will not realize this. When outside is well settled, that is when you'll see how hollow life has become. The biggest question in the world, you will see in the next few decades is, what the hell are we doing here anyway? Because everything that needs to be fixed on the outside is done, now what? 7.2 billion people on the planet, but right now gradually it's looming large. Loneliness is one of the biggest problems. Dogs are being tortured to fulfill human loneliness. Because as you dedicate yourself more and more to your intellect, you will naturally become more and more lonely because it keeps on dissecting and cutting life into various pieces for examination and then you will see, you yourself will be split up into many parts after some time, if you go by the intellect, hundred percent. The next dimension of the mind is referred to as ahankara. Normally people think it means ego, no, it means identity. You're identified with something. The moment you're identified with something, your intellect will work only to protect that identity. No matter what, whichever way you think, your ideas of which nation you belong to, which race you belong to, which culture you belong to, which religion you belong to, which gender you belong to, the moment you get identified, your intellect will work only to protect that identity. So, it is a certain kind of prejudice. Because people are willing to live and die for what they're identified with, because the nature of the intellect is, if you take away the identity, it will not know what to do. It needs a strong identity, a strong sense of who I am. If you ask, who am I, your intellect will not function. You must know who you are, a strong sense of belief that this is what I am. That is when your intellect will function in a certain way. This is like, Intellect is like a sharp knife, ahankara or the identity is the hand that holds it. All the suffering on the planet, when was the last time that somebody stabbed you? Or what I'm saying is, how much suffering for a human being is actually coming from outside? Almost nothing, rest is all self-help. Because this is a sharp knife given to you, unsteady hand, every day it's cutting itself. All that's happening is, your intellect is working against you, that's all it is. Unless somebody is stabbing you from outside, that's a different issue, we need to deal with that differently. Rest is all your own intelligence turning against you, but this intellect, cannot function without a memory bank, so what is called as manas is a silo of memory. Now the fourth dimension of intelligence is called chitta. 
This is a dimension of intelligence which is unsullied by memory. If you touch this dimension, then the memory has no influence on you. Your genetic memory, your evolutionary memory, your conscious memories, unconscious memory, subconscious memory, whatever kinds of memories you have, it has no influence on you. Or in other words, past cannot recycle itself through you. See, right now, you take on this form because of a certain memory, it's a certain software. If you eat, let's say you're a man and you eat a piece of bread, this piece of bread turns into a man. You're a woman and you eat a piece of bread, the same piece of bread turns into a woman. You give it to your dog, it turns into your dog. Very intelligent bread. It is just the memory that you carry. Here there is a memory which transforms everything the way it is. So, this dimension of intelligence which is called as chitta, which is untouched by any kind of memory, just pure intelligence, is of significance because it's beyond. It is beyond your species, it is beyond your form, it's beyond your gender, it's beyond your culture, it's beyond every kind of influence which is essentially memory within you.